Hi everyone, so it's Holly with Missouri River Soap and today I am making a batch called Chasing Rainbows. It's going to be a new rainbow soap. First thing I wanna do is put in the coconut milk. I'm splitting this batch into three because I'm using one of my larger molds and it's gonna be a layered design so I thought that would work out well. Because I wanna have time between each layer. So that's the coconut milk. And I do want some titanium dioxide in this one. So I'm going to add a little bit to the base also. I'm wanting a white base, but my fragrance is quite yellow. And it may still end up being a bit buttery color. Gonna add in a lye solution. My base oils are just a hair warm today. I had to reheat my base oils. So they're a little bit warm. I'm hoping that'll work with me um, with this bottom layer. Decided it would be best to pause for a moment, bring over my mold. Add in just a little bit more titanium dioxide. I don't want it to crackle, but I really do want to lighten it up a bit. So in with the fragrance oil, and it is a mango tangerine with a just a touch of peach and a touch of uh, citrus strawberry type fragrance. I'm not even getting a trace yet. My oils weren't really too warm, but my coconut milk was a little bit cool, so that helped to bring down the temperature, and my lye solution was cool. So, what kind of brought us back to a room temperature. I don't feel any heat now at all. I want this to be thick enough that it's going to um, solidify fairly quickly, but I need it to be able to spread also in the mold. I recently remade my rainbow soap with all the layers, and the purple layer, I let it be a little bit too uh, thick and it, the fragrance accelerated a little bit more than I was expecting and so in the long run it kind of uh, didn't spread very well and I had to had to use like a bench scraper to kind of smooth it flat Smack this down. I usually try to scrape the container before I smack it down in this situation. I may pour this in towards an end in case it decides to be a bit on the lumpy side. Oh, it's still going to absorb it, but we're just at that stage where it's starting to get a little bit um, lumpy instead of smoothing out. So I definitely should have stopped and poured that a little bit sooner. I don't think that little bit is really going to be very noticeable. But what I can do, like I was just talking about, is take this bench scraper and just very lightly lay it on the surface. For the most part, it turns out okay. I don't think I'm even gonna mess with that anymore. 
So I need to wait just a little bit because I want to be able to pour on the top of this layer without it sinking in at all. So I really need it quite solidified. So I'm going to take a little break between this layer and the next and that's why I split it up into three batches. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. I took a little break. And now I'm going to start the middle layer, which is going to be the rainbow layer. I did a batch like this kind of before. Um, it was orange, though, I think, on the top and the bottom. I was trying to find a picture of it earlier today, and I could not find my picture to see how that design compared to what I'm doing today. That was my coconut milk. I do just want a touch of titanium dioxide in this to kind of create more pastel colors. I'm going to add just a bit more than that. One more spoonful. And now I'm going to put in a lye solution. I do have some lye lint on these today. But since it's um, fresh and small pieces, It'll incorporate just fine. I don't worry about it. I don't want this to go too far because I am going to um, blend it a bit more in a little so bit. I really just want to emulsify it. And now with my fragrance oil. I don't know about you guys, but the little rings that I get from, you know, when fragrance oil and oils and such, those little rings just drive me nuts. I have got to clean them up. I'm bringing in my handy containers. These are kind of overkill, but I don't have six of the smaller ones at the moment. I can't see what that says. Okay, about one liter is what I'm doing. And then I'll add more to it if needed. Have to take a little away or I may just make one color not quite as um, quite not as much that's not very much left in the bottom though so I am going to have to pour some out I do just have dry mica well no well, I'm wearing the dry mica it's such a small amount that it's a lot easier to mix in. Stuff does go everywhere though. I'm hoping that's going to be enough color. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do yellow. That is quite pastel, but we'll see. Looks like I want a little bit more color. this layer and it's starting to get a little thick but in my experience if we can get a little bit thicker it's gonna be better because it's gonna hold the color differences as long as just get it all in there and this is one reason why I don't use dry colorant because I end up blending too much. So I'm probably going to quit doing that. I decided to give it a try for a while and sometimes it works for me, sometimes it just doesn't. So I think it's more convenient to mix it with my colorant with some of my base oils. Well, what I had done is I had mixed these particular colors up for several batches, so I didn't want just to use, you know, um, I didn't just want to mix it with oil since I was using these particular colors for different batches. That makes sense. I love these pastel colors. It's making me so happy. And I love this pink. Oh my goodness. This pink is amazing. to get a little bit hard on my hands. Debating what I want to do about it. Batch here. 
would like it to be flatter or more roughed up. I have to decide what direction I'm headed. Even though it got thick, I am pleased with the fact that the colors are all separate. I think that in the long run it's prettier than pouring it too thin and the color is getting mottled. So I know it's going to be gorgeous inside. So I'm pretty excited about that. Because when you start mixing all these rainbow colors together, they can go muddy very, very quickly. All right, well, I'm gonna just turn the camera off and I'm gonna think about this for a minute. All right, so I decided that I'm gonna smooth it out just a bit. This isn't going to make a huge um, difference to my uh, design by smushing it a bit. It'll just be on the top of that layer because my soap is not very level here. These bench scrapers can be very handy. You can see the colors are not really modeling at all. And if anything, it's just this top um, pinky pink, orange, yellow layer, which looks pretty nice still. But I still have some air pockety spots. I am so excited about this soap. It looks so nice. it to be fairly flat and I'm having to like kind of soften it up and cause it to fill those light those um you know kind of gaps as it's so thick but I think I'm gonna like this so much better so I could do this all day that's the problem so I need to just finish I'm really just barely touching it but it's creating these grooves and I kind of want to get rid of those all right so let's finish this soap batch up in with the coconut wow and with the coconut milk Good golly, it's splattery all of a sudden. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in a titanium dioxide. Last time I did five spoonfuls. So I want it to match. solution. fragrance oil. Well, good grief. I'm not used to making this big of a mess. I want to be able to pour that in and let it fill in the um, unevenness of my attempt at evenness. 
the last layer. So it is not even at a trace actually. Well, I guess I'll blend it a smidge more. getting heavy. Okay, so here we go. Just pour in this beautiful lusciousness of soap. It's getting thick quite quickly. A lot of stick blending happened. Kind of shimmy and smack it down, release air bubbles. I'll probably let this set for just a little bit. Oh, it's kind of nice actually. I want it to have a little texture on the top. This is probably okay because I don't want it to be um, too high with any peaks because this is already a pretty big batch and probably won't fit in my soap boxes. Um, won't be a lot of room to spare, I should say. So I guess I'll just just kind of swish it up a bit, zhuzh it. Okay, I'm just gonna put on a little bit of iridescent glitter, just a just a nice little sprinkle. It's not very iridescenty though, so I might grab some other ones. This is really my favorite, but it's a little bit silver. But if I just am very gentle with it, it's going to look good. I just don't want a whole bunch, just a little bit of glitter. Stuff can come out really fast all of a sudden. Alright, so I'm going to call that good. I really just wanted just a hair of glitter, just, just a smidgen. Now here we have... The Chasing Rainbow Soap, and I will be back for the cut. Okay, so I'm back to cut Chasing Rainbow Soap, and I could not be more pleased with this batch, I'm pretty sure. And that is so pretty. I just love, love how it turned out. I could have added a couple more loves onto there. It just turned out so neat. I can't see where, no. Oh. We don't fit here. Moving forward a hair. Um, I can see where some of my um, layers weren't exactly even, but I don't even think it matters in this soap. So I cut off an end. I always like to cut off the ends to get my, um, because we'll look at this. See how the end has some weirdness and this is where I was, I scraped the edge of the mold. I just use these as samples. I did have just a little bit of ash. I sprayed it pretty good again the next day or when I unmolded it. Look at that. Look at it. Oh. 
I love rainbows and I love this rainbow soap. Anyway, I did spray it pretty liberally and it did um, kind of, I don't know what the good word for that is. Anyway, it definitely took care of the ash. There's just a, just a hint of it in a few spots, but I think it works well with it. So this scent is super good. I am crazy pleased with this blend. As you can tell, the batter did end up being quite yellow. And it's not white, which is totally cool. It is the buttery yellow, and I just think it works great with it. But also, because the scent is such a citrusy blend, it actually turned out very similar to like a rainbow sherbet type, only I think better. And that's a very citrusy, just super sweet type of a fragrance. Gosh, I just, I love this. It almost has like a landscape in some, like a rainbowy sunset landscape. And one of my um, subscribers, not a subscriber, someone on Facebook, one of my customers said that it actually reminded them of a Southwest theme. And you know what? It does. It's pretty cool. Makes me think of like um, pictures that you see of Arizona and all the wildflowers and like Sedona. I want to go to Sedona someday. I've never been to Arizona and one of my, my bestest buds ever and some very delightful customers also live in Arizona. I send a lot of product to Arizona. But we'd love to take the fifth wheel out there someday. And my husband had a conference to go to out in Arizona and only in Phoenix, but um, we were thinking, wouldn't it be fun if we could take the fifth wheel and we could all go? I mean, I guess we've sort of recovered from, <laughs> from our Colorado trip. My uh, ex-brother-in-law always called it Colorado. So I actually, do tend to call it Colorado. <laughs> Just, let's butcher that. It's kind of like calling Missouri. Uh, how is it that the um, old timey Missourians they say it Missouri? I don't really like it that way. I'm sure people cringe when I say Colorado, but I don't know. It just makes me think of him, and I laugh. So that's the story with that. But we were thinking it would be awesome to take a trip out there, and I definitely want to go to Arizona. There's just, I feel like Arizona has a lot to offer and it would be great fun to go someday. It's gonna be a, a heck of a journey to get there from Missouri though. So I don't know. I'd love to go out to like Tahoe and um, let's see if some other places we have some family that is going to be out in the Tahoe area but it's all quite a journey especially by by land so I don't know I don't know that that's ever going to happen well I don't know that it's going to happen anytime soon it will to my best of my abilities happen someday to the best of my abilities happen someday. My husband and I think we'll travel quite a bit when the kids have flown the coop, but I don't know. I like to think about it anyway. So these are some pretty nice samples, really. I actually have a whole lot because when I use this particular mold, I get, let's say, I think five loaves out of it. And I do slice a bit off each side, so I get a bunch of samples, which is kind of awesome for me. So I still have some loaves of my rainbow soap to cut, so I thought, hey, maybe I'll add that in here on the end. This was 
batch was made just a little while prior to the Chasing Rainbows, so it's quite a bit harder. And I already have a couple of the loaves cut up already. And some of them are even cleaned up because I've been taking pictures. There we have the new rainbow soap. And who knows what making rainbow soap means for me. It means that Confetti Blossom is coming up next. And I do have plenty of people that love Confetti Blossom. Let's go. Yes, let's go over here and then we can look at it. So pretty. I my layers pretty good. Notice the blue is just a just a smidgen thicker in some loaves. It's all right. We'll roll with it. Oh, I love this. This one is scented in our classic pear scent. It smells amazing. And it's one of those things that I have stuck with pear being the scent for this particular soap. Sometimes they switch around like the neon rainbow, but this one has stayed the same. Oh, it's just looking so pretty. Love it. I would love to keep more rainbow soaps in stock all the time. It's just that they're very labor intensive and it does hurt my hands quite a bit to stir so many pots of color all at once for one batch. So we just have to let them be special for special occasions. I do have another almost rainbow plan. We'll see if I will ever be able to get that one accomplished. Okay, so I'm gonna cut, this is pretty big. It's right at a bar size and that actually looks pretty good there on the back so I guess I'll keep that we'll just clean that off so it's just a just a well it's right out of bar but maybe a sliver off so that'll work we'll do that I don't know if I'm going to be able to I kind of get my space closed in on oh I messed up my row okay well we'll come back to, we'll fix that in a minute Always got to have the straight lines. My husband tells me, it's like your OCD is showing. I put that away. Yeah. Oh. I didn't always used to be super particular. There was a very defining moment, a couple defining moments in my life that kind of I don't like the word triggered, but, you know, kind of caused me to think about certain things a little bit more. One was our, all our dogs got out one time, and that was, we had five at the time, and it was very traumatizing for me being an animal lover, and all our dogs were missing. And that was just because I hadn't um, done the lock right, and so I was a little particular about locks for a while, kind of over that for the most part, especially since everything's technology related anymore. You know, your cards beep at you and security systems tell you that everything's locked. But anyway, that's probably just TMI. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to such things. Oh, this is just looking great. I'm super pleased with this batch. I'm going to slice just a sliver off of the back end of this one. And here is the rainbow batch. Looks great. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later.